Hello and welcome back. Today I want to continue working on solar stellar modeling by actually modeling it. So I will be looking at how a library file can be created in LTSpice specifically for a solar cell. I will analyze how you can use model parameters generated externally by your algorithm of choice, but also how you can implement such an algorithm directly into LTSpice. So create a library file that uses datasheet parameters directly. So if you're curious about that and much more, then keep watching. So let's not waste any time and get right to it. Now the first thing when creating a new model, it's best to construct it in the schematic viewer. So for today I will be building the two resistor one diode equivalent model of the solar panel, which I've already drawn out. And well, other than building the circuit in the simulator, some other things you would like to watch out for is on the one side, give some dedicated names to the nets that you will be interfacing with. So for example, here I'm using V plus and V minus for the supply lines, but I also have this illumination net, which we will be using to set the illumination exposure of the solar panel. Now, other than these nets getting names, the various parameters that you will be using in the model also need to have some special names. So for example, these parameters attributed to the values of the resistors RS and R shunt are written in brackets for our behavioral current source. So this is the photo current and the total value of this current source is dependent not just on this photo current, but also the illumination. So a thousand volts will be equivalent to a thousand watts per square meter. If you have a different value, then you will get the smaller current. And finally, for the diode, I'm using the built-in diode model in LTSpice, and this will be using three parameters. So on the one side, we have the IO parameter, which is attributed to the built-in saturation current, so this IS. Then our ideality factor and number of cells will be used as a single parameter attributed to N, which is the emission coefficient. And finally, T ref represents the temperature at which these first parameters have been calculated at, and we will be equaling that to the global temperature of the simulation. Now you could use some more complex formulas, but for now, let's leave it like this. And before moving forward, let's just quickly test that the model actually works. So for that, I prepared some values for the various parameters, and our illumination is connected to a voltage source, so 1000 volts, 1000 watts per square meter. And then to the output, I've connected the pulse load. So this will increase its load from zero amperes to one ampere in the time of one second. So if we run the simulation, we can look at the current running through the load and rather than expressing it based on time, we can express it based on the voltage in the V plus net. So the output voltage. So we get a nice curve, quite characteristic to how solar panels normally work. We can of course add another trace that multiplies our current times the output voltage to also get the power graph. So we can determine the exact maximum power point. So the model seems to work. Now, once you're happy with the model, the various parameter definitions, the various net definitions, next step is to take it from the simulator and put it into a library file. So for that, I reverted back to the initial schematic where I didn't have all of the extra sources. And if we go to the view spice net list, here we will see most of the information that we need. So here we have a net list with all of the components and the various interconnections. So we will need to take these, put them into a text editor, so notepad will do. I also included the model of the diode and we end everything up with the dot end statement. And then to begin with, we need to define a subcircuit. So a subcircuit that will contain all of these things. So we will define a subcircuit that is called VV basic and it has three interface pins, V plus, V minus and illumination. Now to be actually able to use this component, we need to define a new component where all of the various parameters that are needed inside of the model are defined. So here I defined the subcircuit test cell one that has three pins connected to nets one, two and three. And under this component, we have another component XU1 which again has pins one, two, and three connected to the same nets, which is of type component PV basic, which we've just defined below, but also has the 
five parameters attributed to it. So this way you can make as many components as you want using the basic photovoltaic cell model that we've just created. Next, we can open this file using LTSpice and on the subcircuit line, simply right click and create a symbol. So we could create a proper symbol, make it look all nice, but just to keep things simple, I will be using a auto-generated symbol and just attributing the various names to it to keep everything as simple as possible. So we know from the library file that pin 1 is the V+, plus, pin 2 is V-, minus, and then pin 3 is the illumination line. So you can simply change the properties of the various pins, rearrange things just to make them look a bit nicer, and final thing under edit, attributes, edit attributes window, I usually recommend to remove this model file link. So this way you will be able to use any model that is linked to the simulation without having the link built into the symbol. So now we can go back to our test circuit, simply look under auto generated, here we should have our symbol that we've just created. We can create the same basic circuit that we've had before, but also include the definition of this simulation model. And if we run the circuit and we look at the two outputs, we see that something isn't working. And well, it was this minus in the IO pin definition, but now that I've corrected it, both our symbol with the included model and the drawn out schematic both have the exact same response. So we're done, right? Or are we? Well, the big problem so far is that we use some parameters that are not that easy to obtain. Sure, there are a lot of scientific papers out there discussing how these can be calculated, or you might be fortunate enough to find a piece of software that does all of the calculations for you, maybe running multiple fine tuning iterations. This piece of software might be able to generate some really good responses and really accurate model parameters, but all of that just involves a lot of work. So how could we simplify the process and just use whatever the datasheet has to offer? Well, we need to start with a specific algorithm to work with. Now, I'm not claiming the algorithm that I will be showing you today is perfect, far from it. It's just an algorithm that works decently and you can of course fine tune it or take any other set of formulas and implement it in a similar fashion. So as input data, we have the various definitions from the datasheet, our open circuit voltage, short circuit current, and then the voltage and current for the maximum power point. But we also get the temperature coefficients for the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current. Now, other than these, the other inputs that we will need are the temperature at which we will want to simulate and the illumination to which the solar panel is exposed. So somehow we need to go from these values to the values that we need in our simulation model. So our dark saturation current, ideality factor, number of cells, series and shunt resistance, and then the photo current. So first step, we can take our temperature and temperature coefficients to recalculate our initial values at the temperature of simulation. And for this, we can take the assumption that our voltage temperature coefficient is valid not just for the open circuit voltage but also for the maximum power point voltage and in the same way we can assume that the temperature coefficient of the short circuit current is the same as for the maximum power point current. So using all of these values we can write the following new parameters. So for these calculations the temperature will be expressed in degrees celsius and I put in 25 as reference since usually the input parameters in the datasheet are expressed at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Now, regarding the other parameters, starting off with the A ideality factor, we can simply give it a value of 1.3, since usually this is quite a common value found in various research papers. So values between 1 and 2 are usually used. Now, for the number of cells, if we don't really know what's going on inside of the panel, we can take the open circuit voltage and simply divided by about 0.7, so the typical forward voltage of a silicon diode. And since both of these parameters are usually used together in all sorts of calculations, we can turn them into a single parameter, which we can call AN, and this will be equal to 1.3 times the open circuit voltage divided by 0.7. Now, regarding the other parameters, we will need our series and shunt resistances, 
I will calculate these using the parameters expressed at the temperature of work. So that's why I put the underscore T in here. And then using these parameters and our short circuit current, we can work out what our initial photo current would be. And the final parameter that we still need is our dark saturation current. And just to keep the formula simple, first of all, we can work out the thermal voltage, which is equal to the Boltzmann constant times the temperature in Kelvin divided by the electron charge. And then this we use in our dark saturation current equation. And now we have all of the parameters we need for our model. Now all of them are expressed at the temperature at which we will be simulating. And these are the ones that I will be working with. Now you may find some other formulas to calculate these values, but these are the ones that I will be going with today. So now that we have all of the parameters, we have a way to obtain them. Starting from the datasheet values, let's put everything into LTSpice. Now for the next example, I will be using some datasheet parameters. So I've chosen this Sun Seco, hope I'm pronouncing that right, solar panel, so 300 watt polycrystalline module. And the nice thing about this datasheet is that other than the various parameters, so your maximum power point voltage and current, open circuit voltage and then short circuit current, and the thermal parameters, we also get a set of graphs. So we'll have something to compare our simulation model to. Now I would just like to mention that in this datasheet the short circuit current coefficient is a negative 0.05%, even though normally this is a positive value. And now this is probably related to the fact that this coefficient is defined over a specific temperature interval. So in part of the temperature interval is positive and in another part it's negative. But anyway, I will keep this as a positive value. Now if we turn to the simulation, I already included the various parameter values as parameter statements and then the various calculations that only need to be performed a single time during the simulation and that we've talked about previously, I've already included them in dot parameter statements. So when the simulation will start up based on the initially included values, all of the other parameters will be calculated. And now just as before, these values will be used in the simulation model. Now when it comes to the resistors, you could express their values either as the parameter in brackets, so that will be a constant value, or as an expression where you can perform various dynamic calculations. So the value can change during the simulation. In this case, their value will stay static. The only value that could change is the behavioral source value of the photovoltaic current. But this of course is a constant because the input illumination current is a constant, but this could vary. And then the only parameters that could not change are the diode parameters. So these have to be constants. The only way around this would be to redefine the diode model using some behavioral sources. But with the standard diode model, this will not work. So now I set a fixed temperature value and then I step the illumination just to see if the simulation model works. So we can check the current running through the load and express this based on the output voltage and we get a nice curve. And of course, the nice thing about having a data sheet is that we can compare our simulation results to it. So in the simulation, I've only simulated three illumination values, the 1000 watt per square meter, 600 and 200. So we have this upper curve, the middle curve and the bottom curve. And we can see that the values mostly agree in between the model and the data sheet. So it's not perfectly the same, but they're close enough. So we get slightly lower currents at minimum illumination, so we should be slightly above 2, we're at 1.8. But the voltages at least are roughly in the area they should be. Now if we change the parameter definition, so simulate over multiple temperatures with a fixed illumination, and we rerun the simulation, again we can compare this to the data sheet. So we are looking for the rightmost two curves, so 10 degrees, 25 degrees, and then the leftmost curve, 70 degrees. And we can see again a fairly decent link between what our simulation is giving us and what the data sheet is giving us. So we can be fairly confident in our model. Now, just as before, the next step is to take this and put it into a text file. But right now in the netlist, other than the useful things, we also have a bunch of other parameters and things that we don't really need. So next step is to clean up the simulation. So I only left the mandatory elements in it. 
the various parameter calculations, the components, and well, nothing else. So this is strictly what we need in our model. And now from this, we can look at the netlist and now use the various statements that are needed in our model. So I went ahead and copied them into a text file. We have our model here on the bottom. This time I called it the photovoltaic complex model. It still has the same three inputs, V plus, V minus, and illumination. We have the five components and then the various calculations needed for the parameters. Now I also included a bit of a definition of what are the necessary parameters that are needed. So this sort of information is quite useful to have in a library file just so you know one or two years from now what exactly you've done. And then I've taken three commercially available solar panels. So I left some links for their data sheets and I extracted the various values that define their behavior. So now we can take this library file and include it into the simulation using an include statement or we can simply copy all of it and directly throw it into the simulation as a spice directive. So this way, if you move your simulation file, you will not lose your link to the library file. And I already prepared a set of basic test circuits. So I used the symbol that we've previously implemented and I just gave the various names for the components, which are defined here in the library file. So now we can run the simulation. Again, I'm stepping the temperature and I'm leaving the illumination as a constant and we can check the response. So we can again plot the current going through the load based on the output voltage. And we are getting the same response that we've gotten previously when we had all of the circuit thrown into the simulator. The advantage of course now is that we can make simulations with multiple implementations of the same model. So we can now run a simulation that looks something like this. We have two solar panels in series, both exposed to the same amount of illumination both having a common load. And well, if we look now at the current, express it again based on the output voltage, we can see the same current as before, but this time we have double the output voltage. Now, other than running simulations with multiple panels in series, you can expose them to different amounts of light. You can change the value of the illumination parameter dynamically during the simulation. And you can test various circuits that take advantage of the energy coming from the solar panel. So what you do with the model is up to you. Even though the solar panel model that I showed is not perfect, it is usable. It should be able to offer quite a bit of insight in most simulations. And of course, the model can be adapted and improved. The main idea though, is that you can take any parameter definition algorithm and to a certain extent at least, include it into LDSpice. I will be leaving a link in the description of the video to the two library files that I showed today. So you can play around with them test them out and maybe improve on the algorithm a bit. And with that said, hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my latest videos and see you next time. Bye bye.